Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the bright side of the bay, beautiful Oakland, California, and the commissioning of USS Oakland, LCS 24. I am Commander Derek Jaskowiak, the ship's executive officer. It is my honor and privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. We welcome those joining us in vehicles and welcome our family and friends as they participate in today's event across the globe through the power of the internet. We are here today to commission the third ship to proudly carry the name Oakland. The first Oakland, ID 2847, originally named War Breeze, was a steamship built in 1918 for British owners. She was pressed into service during World War I, commissioned on June 3, 1918, was decommissioned on May 13, 1919, and returned to the United States Shipping Board. The second Oakland, CL-95, was a modified Atlanta-class light cruiser. Her keel was laid at Bethlehem Shipbuilding in San Francisco on July 15, 1940, and the ship was commissioned July 17, 1943. Following a shakedown and training cruise off San Diego, in the summer of 43, Oakland sailed to Pearl Harbor, arriving on November 3rd. Joining with three heavy cruisers and two destroyers, she linked up with Task Group 50.3 near Funafuti in the Elise Islands for support of Operation Galvanic, the amphibious push into the Gilbert Islands. The carriers launched initial airstrikes on November 19th, and in retaliation, a wave of Japanese torpedo bombers attacked their formation on the afternoon of the 20th. Oakland scored two kills and two assists in fighting off the Raiders. On November 26th, northeast of the Marshall Islands, Oakland again fought off strong, coordinated torpedo plane attacks. At 11.32 p.m. on December 4th, a torpedo tore into the side of the carrier USS Lexington damaging steering control. Oakland covered her slow withdrawal and both ships arrived in Pearl Harbor on December 9, 1943. In 1944, Oakland conducted strikes against Malalap, Kwajalein, and Majuro Islands. During a series of night attacks by Japanese aircraft, Oakland's gun crews shot down two bandits and assisted in the downing of two others. She spent most of 1944 providing naval gunfire support and bombardment of hardened Japanese bases throughout the South Pacific area of operations. She was awarded nine battle stars during World War II. After the war, Oakland was refitted and continued service until she was decommissioned on March 5, 1951. This ship and her crew are honored to bear the name Oakland and to continue the proud legacy of courage handed to us by those who have gone before us on the previous USS Oaklands. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our nation's first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent halls to active warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation on the pier and on board, ready to bring our ship to life. In just a few moments, we will render honors to the acting secretary of the Navy.
Please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our official party, Mr. Greg Brazil, honorary long glass presenter. Dr. Lori Brandt, Matron of Honor. Miss Jennifer Nadu Helm, Matron of Honor, joining us remotely. Commander Chris Nettemeyer, United States Navy. Littoral Combat Ship Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast, Detachment Mobile. Captain Michael Barber, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy Retired, Bishop, Diocese of Oakland. Captain John Fay, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron One. Mr. Larry Ryder, Vice President of Business Development and External Affairs, Austell, USA. Rear Admiral Thomas Andrews III, Supply Corps, United States Navy Retired, Chairman, USS Oakland Commissioning Committee. Rear Admiral Casey Moten, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Unmanned and Small Combatants. The Honorable Libby Schaff, Mayor, City of Oakland, California. Vice Admiral Sean Buck, United States Navy, Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Ms. Kate Brandt, escorted today by Senior Chief Donna Barrowiden, United States Navy, Oakland's Command Senior Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Thomas W. Harker, Acting Secretary of the Navy, escorted today by Commander Francisco X. Garza, United States Navy, Oakland's prospective commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Acting Secretary of the Navy. Platform and salute.
platform. Ready? Two. Advance the colors. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight less gleaming? Who brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the rampart we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets regular The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet away Oh, land of the free and the home of the Retire the colors. Platform, ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Barber will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who will sail in the USS Oakland. May your holy arm protect this ship from all evil, and may her presence on the high seas be a testament and guarantee of peace and freedom. Unite her commanding officer, officers and crew in the spirit of service and dedication and strengthen them in the hour of danger that they may faithfully perform their duty. May her guns never have to be fired in anger, but should it be necessary, lead this ship and her crew to victory. We give you thanks for the example of those sailors who have gone before us for the seafarers of our nation, who in great or small ships have braved the perils of the deep. 
We pray in a special way for all who have given their lives for our country. Lord, we beg you, keep Commander Garza, the officers and crew of the USS Oakland always in your love and peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Barber. We would like to thank the Navy Operational Center, Alameda Color Guard, the California Army National Guard, 84th Pacific Training Command, Wild West Brigade Saluting Battery, Dr. Yvonne Cobbs, and the Coast Guard Air Sector San Francisco for their support this morning. Please be seated. Ship's Company, Parade Rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Libby Schaff. Good morning. To Secretary Harker, Vice Admiral Buck, the entire Oakland Commissioning Committee, and the Oakland Port Authority, what an honor to welcome you to Oakland, California on this auspicious morning. We could not be more proud to have this ship carry the name of our beloved city. As an Oakland na native and the daughter of a proud veteran who served in World War II, I could not be more thankful to the incredible service that each and every one of you has provided and will continue to provide our great American democracy. It is such an honor to have this ship named after Oakland, California. And I hope as you serve so nobly on it, you think about the symbolism of Oakland, a city named for one of the strongest trees that we know, that never forgets that it is rooted deeply in values and that it always stretches to the sunlight to aspire towards greatness. Our city is known for having great passion for those American values of freedom and justice. So please, when you gaze upon the symbols of the oak tree in your ship's flag, continue to draw from the strength, just as trees draw from the nutrients in the soil, that those are the values that feed your dedication to public service. We are also a city that is so humbly grateful for the incredible sacrifice of you as public servants, your families, your loved ones, everything that they put aside to allow you to serve us so nobly and with such distinction, please accept on behalf of the entire city of Oakland our deep gratitude and pride in this moment. I would like to ask Commander Francisco Garza, the Commander Senior Chief, uh, and I'd also like to appreciate Senior Chief Donna Barra uh, Baroidan and the crew and their families. But if Commander Garza could join me, I would like to present to you a special proclamation on behalf of the city of Oakland, as well as the flag of our city. This proclamation recognizes the USS Oakland and resolves that we proclaim today, Saturday, April 17th, as USS Oakland Day in the city of Oakland. Congratulations. And then on behalf of our city, may you honor this beautiful flag of our city as it flies aside the beautiful flag of this ship. 
Thank you, and God bless all of you who will serve on this ship. Thank you, Mayor Schaff. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Ryder. Thank you, XO. Good morning. I'm Larry Ryder, the Vice President of Business Development and External Affairs for Austal USA. Today I have the honor of representing the men and women of Austal and our teammates and suppliers that built this great ship. Ms. Brandt, Secretary Harker, Mayor Schaff, Admiral Buck, Rear Admiral Moten, Commander Garza, crew of the USS Oakland, and your proud families, good morning. I'd also like to recognize a member of our team that uh, would love to be here, but uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Captain Terry O'Brien recently passed away. Terry was a key member of the team that led to this special day. He not only had an illustrious Navy career, but after he retired from the Navy, Terry became a powerful advocate and a leading voice for the shipbuilding industry and the United States Navy. Terry was a selfless mentor to many, a valued colleague, and a close friend. As a shipbuilder, we at Austell have seen every stage of development of this great ship. From the keel laying in July 2018, when Ms. Brandt joined us in Mobile to commemorate the start of construction, to the christening in July, June of 2019, and the sail away last November, we have seen the design develop into the combat-ready warship that will soon be deployed in support of our nation's defense. It has been a privilege working with our Navy partners, Admiral Moten, Captain Schneider, Commander Niedemeyer, and their teams to develop the USS Oakland. We value our relationship with the Navy, and we look forward to designing and building ships for the Navy for decades to come. I also want to recognize the incredible support the Austell team has received from the state of Alabama, the city and county Mobile, and the entire Gulf Coast region. This ship and the others we are building now and will build in the future strengthen the industrial base, which is so vital to the nation's prosperity. Secretary Harker, we greatly appreciate your continued support and leadership for the strength of the national industrial base. Commander Garza, when you and your crew sail the world's oceans in the coming years, the hard work and the pride of a patriotic workforce of over 3,500 skilled craftsmen and a base of suppliers spanning 40 states will sail with you. Be assured that this team will be ready to support you anytime, anywhere you call. We're looking forward to seeing this great warship steaming west to conduct operations in the South China Sea or wherever the nation's call takes you. Fair winds and following seas to you and your crew. May God bless and watch over the USS Oakland and those who sail on her in defense of our great nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Casey Moten. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for the commissioning of USS Oakland, the 24th littoral combat ship built for the Navy Surface Force. Secretary Harker, Mayor Schaff, Ms. Brandt, Vice Admiral Buck, Commodore Fay, and Commander Garza, thank you for your service and leadership. I also offer my sincere thanks to the commissioning committee led by Admiral Andrews, the crew of LCS 24, their families and friends, and the staff of LCS Squadron 1, and all the supporting commands and offices whose dedicated commitment and effort has enabled this important day, the commissioning of a United States Navy warship. I also want to pay my special respects to Commander Dean Diz Laird, U.S. Navy retired. Commander Laird was a U.S. Navy ace in World War II in both the Pacific and European theaters. Sir, it's a true honor to have you here, and I know it means a lot to the crew. So thank you for being here today. So how about a round of applause? Thank you. 
Thank you. As we assemble this morning on San Francisco Bay to commission LCS 24, I think it's important that we also recall the history of another USS Oakland that was commissioned just across the bay here at the former Bethlehem Steel Shipyard at Hunters Point in July 1943. Light Cruiser Oakland earned nine battle stars during her service in the Pacific Campaign, taking part in almost every major fleet action from Kwajalein to the Philippines, Guam, and Okinawa. Like her namesake sister ship, LCS-24 will also deploy to the Western Pacific as part of the Seventh Fleet, sailing many of the same oceans and seas. USS Oakland and her forebear are markedly different warships in terms of tonnage, crew size, and firepower. But what links them together across different strategic eras is their mission. Both share a common operational bond based on an enduring naval mission set, being forward deployed, closely engaging with allied and partner navies, and ensuring the free flow of global maritime commerce. I am proud today to represent your Navy shipbuilding team, a true team of both government and industry. Warship construction is one of the most complex industrial endeavors. Oakland is constructed from almost a million feet of cabling, more than 100,000 square feet of insulation, thousands of feet of piping, and over 1,000 metric tons of aluminum. The raw materials, the machinery components, the elect electronic systems, and the weapons that go into the construction of LCS-24 are produced by hundreds of large and small companies across America, including 56 firms located right here in California. Those parts and systems all arrive separately at the shipyard in Mobile, Alabama, from all across the nation to be forged into this warship by the hard work and mission dedication of the men and women of Austell USA and our Navy team at the Supervisor of Shipbuilding. From the welders to the pipe fitters to the electrical technicians, our shipbuilders along with our Navy suppliers represent the might of American industrial capability. The sailors of LCS 24, likewise, come from dozens of towns and cities across our great nation. Through hard training, dedication, and teamwork, they forge new bonds that weld them into a ship's crew ready to defend our nation's freedom. Both Oakland's crew and the industrial team that built her will always share an unbreakable bond, plank owners in the still-to-be-written history of LCS 24. Crew, the shipbuilding team will always have your back. Thank you. God bless USS Oakland, her crew, and their families. Thank you, Rear Admiral Moten. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Sean Buck. Secretary Harker, Mayor Schaff, Ms. Brandt, fellow flag officers, captain and crew of the USS Oakland, shipbuilders, family, family and friends, it is my pleasure to join you on this auspicious day. It's no small task to bring a warship from a vision to a vessel on the pier. Thank you to the thousands of people who contributed to bringing the USS Oakland to the fleet. Elected officials, Department of the Navy, builders, the crew, our ship sponsor, and the people of Oakland, California. You all played a part in making today happen. It's a magnificent thing to watch a ship come alive on commissioning day. And I'm thrilled to be here on behalf of our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday, to give the keys and the command of our Navy's newest warship to Commander Garza and the crew members of the USS Oakland. The USS Oakland will soon join our fleet of Independence-class littoral combat ships, providing critical capabilities in some of the most contested and complex waters around the globe. As LCS sailors, 
the Oakland's crew will be charged with using their agile and adaptable platform to execute an array of nearshore and open ocean operations. They will ensure that the United States can maintain access to critically important regions of the world by leveraging their ship, their systems, and their training to defeat threats such as nearly silent diesel submarines and maneuverable fast surface craft. The crew of an LCS must be prepared to go where our larger ships cannot and to execute our nation's bidding on a moment's notice in a complex and rapidly evolving national security environment. Today, our nation's littoral combat ships and their crews are deployed around the world doing just that. In the Western Pacific, our littoral combat ships help our allies to counter the growing influence of China's Navy. In the Arabian Gulf, they protect our deployed forces and ensure vital energy resources can continue to travel by the sea. And in the waters off of Latin America and the Caribbean, they help stem the flow of illegal drugs from South and Central America to our shores. 24-7, 365 days a year, our LCS crews are deployed around the world, providing presence, security, sea control, and deterrence on behalf of the American people. I know the crew of the LCS USS Oakland stands ready to sail over the horizon and assume the watch on behalf of our nation, too. And I look forward to seeing what you all accomplish. Sail safe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my now distinct privilege to introduce our Acting Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Thomas W. Harker. Thank you, Admiral Buck, for that nice introduction. Thank you, Mayor Schaff, for coming and speaking with us today and participating in the ceremony. I'd also like to thank Admiral Moton, Commander Garza, and the Navy leadership for their participation. i uh, especially like to thank the crew for all the work they did getting us to the place where we're ready to put this ship into commission. It's no easy feat, and the work you did will uh, carry forward uh, throughout the service of this ship. Thank you also to the shipbuilders at Austell, all the work that you did getting this ship ready, building it, all of the hundreds of thousands of hours that went into building a ship uh, out of the aluminum that has turned it into this wonderful USS Oakland that sits behind us. It's a great pleasure for me to be home in California and to be back in Oakland after uh, many years. I uh, spent several years here in the, north, um, in the northern part of California uh, going to the University of California, and I got to row in the Oakland Estuary and have some of this water that's uh, behind us uh, splash up on me for some of that time. And so being here is a distinct pleasure for me. Uh, but you don't want to hear about me. What you want to hear about is the amount of work that went into building this ship and the uh, incredible team that did that work and the crew that is going to carry forward sailing this ship into danger. Uh, this independence class, LCS, is proof of what that teamwork can accomplish, uh, both civilian, contractors, and military. Uh, we now have a finished warship behind us that is ready to be placed into, condition, into commission. She's a marvel of engineering, uh, which will extend our capabilities for any mission uh, across the blue water uh, from shoreline to shoreline. She's a ship that will build our sustainability and enhance our networked distributed power. So it's only fitting that her sponsor is the sustainability officer for Google. Uh, was previously the energy advisor to the Secretary of the Navy, Mavis. And I uh, thank you, Kate Brandt, for guiding the ship through every stage of this commissioning, from the keel laying uh, to the uh, launch, uh, to the christening, and now for the commissioning. Your spirit of public service and innovation will sail with us always. As we celebrate Oakland's journey to the fleet, uh, we remember the legacy she carries with her. Uh, there have been a couple of different USS Oaklands. Admiral Moton spoke about the uh, light cruiser during World War II and all of the honors that that cruiser earned in nine different battles. Uh, but there's a long history of service from Oak the people of Oakland. Uh, the people of Oakland have served in every uh, recent war. Uh, World War II, we had members from Oakland in every one of our services, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. 
Uh, they went into harm's way on ships like this, uh, ships World War II predecessor. Um, the value that we get from people serving in the military is huge. And so I say to the crew, thank you for your service. Thank you for volunteering to serve in the America's Navy, the world's finest Navy. And I uh, ask you to uh, go forward confidently that the ship that you're sailing on is well built and will be serving America well for many years into the future. We can't know the missions you'll perform in this complex world, but we know that you'll be ready. Thank you for your service, and I thank you the families as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and place this ship into commission. Thank you, Secretary Harker. Sir, I would be honored if you would now place Oakland in commission, sir. On behalf of the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Oakland in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Secretary Harker. Executive Officer, voice the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company, attend, hut. The commission pennant in national navies took form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the mainmast head to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will continuously fly throughout the ship's active life. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Oakland. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Personnel Command to Commander Francisco X. Garza, United States Navy. Subject, Buper's Order Number 9580 of 01 April 2020. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duties and report to pre-commissioning unit Oakland as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Oakland, report for duty as commanding officer. Vice Admiral Buck, United States ship Oakland is in commission. I, I am in command. Very well, Captain. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer Deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have U.S. Navy veteran Baker First Class Robert Almquist 
plank owner, USS Oakland CL95, joining us remotely. My name is Robert Onquist. I'm from Wisconsin Rapids. I joined the Navy in uh, September of 1943. And then I went to Great Lakes. From Great Lakes, I went to DI, and I was signed to the Oakland there. Well, I wish all the men in the Navy, I mean, on board ship, especially the plank owners. And, and I wish the crew and, and the whole town of Oakland a very good luck. I wish I could have been there with you, because I would love to be there with you all. U.S. Navy veteran and member of the USS Oakland Commissioning Committee, aviation anti-submarine warfare technician, third class Greg Brazil, will pass the long glass on behalf of Mr. Almquist to our first officer of the deck. Information systems technician, first class Tiffany Adams from Gulfport, Mississippi. The petty officer of the watch is sonar technician, second class Mason Wolf from Rogers, Arkansas. The messenger of the watch is sonar technician, second class Juan Cardenas from Lockhart, Texas. And the bosun mate of the watch is bosun mate, first class Darius Jackson from Chicago, Illinois. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the first watch is set. Very well. Detail board mark. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Ms. Kate Brandt, with us today. Ms. Brandt christened the ship in Mobile, Alabama on June 29, 2019. Kate, I would be honored if you would give the order to mount our ship and bring her to life. Officers and crew of the USS Oakland, man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Oakland salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. Oakland, ready, two. Please be seated. Captain, USS Oakland is manned and ready. Very well. Kate, if you would like to give remarks, please. Good morning. Secretary Harker, Admiral Buck, Admiral Moten, Mayor Schaff, Commander Garza, our incredible crew of the USS Oakland, Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends who are here with us today on the pier, as well as joining us remotely from home, it is such a great honor to be here with you today. I am Kate Brandt, and I have the deep honor of serving as this wonderful ship's sponsor. Today, of course, is a very big day for the crew and for the city of Oakland, as well as a great day for the Navy and our nation. All of the hard work and determination put forth by our plank owners has paid off, and it is time to join the fleet. My deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for your incredible service to our nation and your dedication to the mission of bringing the USS Oakland to the fleet. As the ship sponsor, as well as a very proud Bay Area native, I can't wait to witness the great work you will do to protect this nation. I also want to recognize our incredible commissioning committee, Admiral Andrews, Mr. Brazil, and everyone else who has worked so tirelessly to make today possible. As has been mentioned, in 2016, the former Secretary of the Navy, 75th Secretary Ray Mavis, just bestowed upon me the tremendous honor of serving as the ship's sponsor. And I've already had the great pleasure of being on a journey with both the team from the Navy and Austell beginning with our keeling in Mobile in 2018, the incredible christening ceremony we had in 2019, and of course, here with you today. As the sponsor of the ship, my role, along with my wonderful matrons of honor, my mother, Dr. Lori Brandt, and Jennifer Neto Helm, our role is to serve as the spirit of this ship and to be a steadfast support and champion of its crews throughout her life. Both myself and my matrons of honor have deep roots and ties to the Navy and the US Armed Forces. As the Secretary so kindly mentioned, I had the honor of serving as uh, an appointee under Secretary Mavis as his energy advisor as we work to increase the energy security and the sustainability of the US Navy. Also, Jennifer, my wonderful matron of honor who can't be here with us today but is joining from home, her husband, Austin Helm, is a proud member of the Navy Reserves and has been a submariner at the start of his career. Also, my mother's father, Solomon, served in the US Army during World War II. And my great uncle, Jack, until he passed in 2017 at 106 years old, was one of the oldest living officers who had served in World War II. My husband's wonderful family, the Grants, also have deep ties with the Navy. Paul was a naval aviator in World War II, Sean's grandfather. His grandfather, Richard, also served in World War II, and his father, Richard Jr., served in Vietnam. And the relative who is most deeply in our thoughts today is Sean's grandmother, Doris, who served in the waves. And not only was she a proud member of the Navy, but she served in the waves right here in Oakland in the Naval Hospital. I had the great pleasure of getting to know her late into her 80s when she still every day proudly told us that she did her sit-ups and her push-ups and her pull-ups because she learned her PT in the Navy and she had kept it up through the rest of her life. 
So from me and my family, it is such an honor to be a member of this ship and its life for here for many, many years to come. Blessings of fair winds and following seas to the crew of the USS Oakland, the Navy, and the city of Oakland. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Britt. Commodore Fay, USS Oakland is man and ready and reports for duty, sir. Very well. Congratulations and do great things. Thank you, Commodore. Secretary Harker, request permission to break your flag, sir. Permission granted. Thank you. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Acting Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Acting Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Acting Secretary of the Navy is proudly flying over USS Oakland. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Francisco X. Garza, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Oakland. Ship's Company, Parade, rest. Honorable Secretary Harker, Honorable Mayor Schaff, our superb ship sponsor, Ms. Kate Brandt, Vice Admiral Buck, Rear Admiral Moten, Rear Admiral Andrews, Commodore Fay, and other distinguished guests. We're honored to have you here with us in person for this momentous occasion. Family, friends, and other honored guests, Oakland, thank you all for joining us at this unique event. Some of you have traveled far and wide to attend in person. The commissioning committee and the commissioning support team have put together a creative solution to overcome challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic with this first ever drive-in style commissioning event. It is with great pride that I stand here in Oakland to commission our warship. Our crew was committed to conducting the ceremony in Oakland to forge a connection with the ship's namesake city as well as imbue the spirit and legacy of the former warships that proudly borne the name Oakland. We are truly honored to have you here to celebrate with us our future of our ship and the legacy of her namesake. I would like to extend my gratitude on behalf of the crew to the citizens of Oakland, the commissioning committee, the Oakland Navy League, and our wonderful sponsor, Ms. Kate Brandt, for the kindness, support you have generously given to enable the state to be successful. Your efforts are vital in ensuring that this ship will protect our nation for many years to come. To the citizens of Oakland, we thank you for your unrivaled hospitality, tremendous patriotism, and unwavering pride. A naval commissioning is more than pomp and circumstance. It is an opportunity to reflect triumphantly on the years of dedication, relentless hard work, and meticulous planning and coordination involving both civilian and military stakeholders that were required to bring this ship into service. There has been an enormous amount of work and time put into building Oakland and preparing the ship for naval service. Warships are some of the most complex machines ever made and the LCS program office in Austell have delivered a ship that is such a pleasure to drive and operate. The shipbuilding is complete, she has tested and her plank owners await the opportunity to man the decks of the Navy's newest warship and bring her to life. Our sailors, the plank owners, is what I want to focus on. Our crew has been in the making for the last two years. The preparation goes back to late 2017 in San Diego at the LCS training facility, where the foundation of our crew began forming. Each sailor completed many months of tailored individual training then came together as a team and continued to train and certify, culminating with a challenging six-week initial crew certification in late 2019. In early 2020, command leadership planned and began executing a phased plan to move our crew from San Diego to Mobile, Alabama to start the process of taking ownership of our ship. That's when the global pandemic hit. 
As the Navy and the country constricted operations while assessing and developing procedures to operate in this new environment, our crew adapted by pulling training and certifications originally planned for Mobile to San Diego while still maintaining the original timeline of moving on board and sailing away from Alabama. After a couple follow-on plans to move the crew to Mobile were again thwarted by the prevailing COVID circumstances, our crew found itself facing a compressed time on station in Mobile. This required each person to give more effort to make sure we were ready to sail away. Often working late into the night, regularly on the weekends, and tackling multiple certifications at the same time, our crew was determined to accomplish the mission of meeting the required certifications to take ownership of our ship and learn the intricacies of operating such a remarkable warship. Why is this important? Because it illustrates the toughness of this crew overcoming the many obstacles that were thrown in our path. Uh, this bring, brings me to the next area that I would like to talk about. The next challenge was the numerous weather events that our crew endured. Laura, Marco, Sally, Delta, Zeta, Ada, Iota, and a condition known as a Tehuantepec event. Unless you're a meteorologist, these names probably don't mean anything to you. But every Oakland sailor knows well the gale force winds, rain, category two to four hurricane ratings, tropical storm versus tropical depression, and yes, even something called a reverse storm surge, don't ask, that these storms all produced. We seem to be a magnet for hurricanes. In fact, I was half expecting storm clouds overhead this morning, but it turned out to be a nice day. Our crew not only conquered these hurdles, but excelled as we took ownership and sailed this warship away from Alabama, across the Gulf of Mexico, through the Panama Canal, and up the Eastern Pacific to our home port of San Diego. I share these stories to give you all an idea of what kind of sailors I have the privilege to serve with. I'm in awe at all they have done to accomplish and you know a lot of you should know a lot of blood, sweat, and tears have been expended to get us to this point. Blood because there have been some scrapes and bruises as we learn how to operate our ship. Sweat because, well, have you been to Alabama in the summertime? Tears because of the immense pride that we all share as we bonded through this incredible experience together. In closing, please know that these sailors have laid a rock solid foundation that will be the roots of this ship's success for the years ahead. Please know that these sailors will represent Oakland, our Navy, and our nation well, and will make you all proud. The highly professional men and women serving aboard Oakland are some of our nation's best and brightest, and our warriors. We're properly trained, we are ready to carry out our orders, and we are ready to go into harm's way in defense of our nation's freedom. With your continued support, we will remain resolute in our service to the great nation. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Ship's Company, attend, hut. Please rise and remain standing for the benediction offered by Bishop Barber. Let us pray. The prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, for whom San Francisco Bay is named. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life Amen. Thank you, Bishop Barber. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This concludes our ceremony. We ask our vehicle-based guests to follow the directions of our parking attendants and drive safely, and we ask our home viewing audience to stay tuned for a virtual tour of USS Oakland, our nation's newest fleet asset. Thank you for joining us today. USS Oakland! Fallout.